know how to be. I'm going to read to you first of all one verse, one verse from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 17. How I could have gone from many passages, friends, this will not be exhaustive. Um, Lord willing, let me just say this to you, Lord willing, come September, I will begin a series through the letter to the Philippine church, the book of Philippines. And I'm sure even as I'm going to touch on that very opening of the letter there, we will touch on this again. Maybe with God's help it may be a little bit more depth. Um, so this morning I'm going to recap from what I spoke about some weeks ago. And then I'm going to speak about not only these men, myself included of course, and the leaders of this church, but you. And what that means for you as the church here, if indeed you are the church. And again, the subject that we'll look at in some months to come is the church here. What is the church here? Who belongs to the church here? But open your Bibles, please, and I'll just read to you this text. Again, not, not difficult to find a text to speak from, but one of the great importance. And it says this, Obey those who rule over you. Be submissive. For they watch out for your souls. At those who must give an account. Friends, this is why I set these men here, not just to show them off. Quite the opposite. Because I want you to get this. I want you to see that this is not just something we do. It's not just some tradition we have. This is what the Word of God has commanded us to be, to do. To watch over you. Let them do so with joy and not with grief. For that would be unprofitable for you. And then verse 18 says, pray for us. For we are confident that we have a conscience in all things. Desiring to live on. Five weeks ago, since we spoke on the duty of elders and deacons, and let me say that that terminology needs to be familiar amongst us. Biblical language, we need to be able to use these words. Five weeks ago, since we, we looked at that and presented to you as the congregation here, watch on church. That the elders here and myself, Mark Rosenbrook, Darren Clark, and today we present to you and we'll be laying hands on Nathan Paler. The deacons of this church are John Wing, John Martin, and from today, Johnny Wong and Chris Horn. Again, I must joke, you don't have to have the name John to be a deacon. What's your name, Chris? John. John. <laughs> It may be, friends, it may be that for some of you that this structure is a new thought. Maybe it's not ever been like this. And in many ways, I, I think I'm fair in saying historically here at Watch On, it's not always been the case. The leaders of the church with its history within Methodism maybe and sure did look somewhat quite different. Coming out of the Methodism, I think, five, six years ago. Has seen the leadership slowly, again, dare say, I'm not in the full knowledge of this, but the knowledge I do have, I would dare say, has slowly has approached a more biblical mandate to which today we seek under God to affirm. You'll remember, I hope, as I've already slightly touched upon it, the opening words from Paul to the Philippians that remind us simply, I confess, the very structure of the church. Philippians 1 1, Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Jesus Christ, and then listen, listen, friends, who he addresses to the saints. In Christ Jesus, who are below by, with the bishops, the elders, and the deacons. 
Simple as this verse sounds, I believe it sheds light on the structure of the church. We have the saints, which is not some Catholic thing. This is God's own set-apart people. If you be in Christ this morning, you are a saint. You have been set apart. You have been made holy. Saints. With the bishops, with the elders, and with the deacons. Let me again, firmly, directly, remind you for the sake of all of us, for me, for these men behind me, and of course you sat before me, that these three sets of people are no better or higher than anybody else. Huge problem in our culture. All these men, myself, like you, are sinners who have been saved by grace, who have been given by God a role in the church of Jesus Christ. Let me say to you, I stand no higher than you. And let me make sure that you're aware of this. I stand no higher than any of these men. Friends, leadership is a plurality. I am accountable to these men behind me. They see me erring, they ought to be on my case. It's good and profitable for the life of the church. I do feel that the reality in many churches is, particularly with deacons, are less than the elders. Deacons are, or have been, a, a posh word for the caretakers of the church. I think, without being in any way critical, I see that the mindset has been here. And again, saints, let this be the last of such thought. The deacons are men who play a huge significance in the day-to-day -day running of the church. Working, yes, in administration, visiting the sick, looking after the very building, yes, that you, all of you, enjoy each day. They assist. Like a wife assists her husband. Not higher, not better, different roles. I trust you getting that. Different roles. Not higher, not better, different role. Man was given a help need to what? Do life. It's similar here. These deacons assist the elders in many of the spiritual matters of God's people. Without embarrassment, friends, I've been here seven months. And without my brother's own name, I would have struggled. A lot of people are at the front, and not everyone's standing here. But the day to day care of the church happens in many ways behind closed doors, sometimes when your head is on the pillow. See, that's not the very reason that Paul was commissioned to set up such men in the churches. We see this throughout the whole of the New Testament where Paul and the, the other apostles set up what? What did they set up? Elders and deacons from place to place as churches are planted. Again, if you are familiar with the New Testament, you will know that that was the very case. Paul planted churches and he put within them Leaders, elders, deacons. Acts 6, again, we've referred to it, I won't for the sake of time this morning, again, particularly there in Acts 20, we see a full sense when Paul tells Timothy to pick elders and deacons to serve and to watch over the church of Jesus Christ. I'll read those, 1 Timothy 3, verses 1 to 7. This is a faithful saying, if a man desires the position of a bishop, elder, he desires the good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behaviour, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy, for money, but not gen but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. 
For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being puffed up, puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. As I read that, I and these men ought to tremble. We read again in 1 Timothy 8, verses 13, Likewise, deacons must be reverent, not the baton, not full of gossip, not coming out of the deacons meeting and telling every time they can marry about that and everything else. Not gossiping with his neighbour about everything else. Not, not to be there. Not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. But let these also first be tested, then let them serve as deacons, being found blameless. Likewise, their wives must be reverent, not slanderers, tempers. Wow, we're bringing wives into it. Faithful in all things. Let deacons be the husband of one right wife. Ruling their children and their own households well. For those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a good standing and a great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. That's the mandate. That is again, as we did last time, make some comments. A huge point that we cannot and should not and will not pass is he, the deacon, the elder, is a sinner, as I have said. A sinner who stands or sits right now before you are men who have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. He's a sinner who has been saved by grace. You might say obvious. Well, sadly, in this culture, not so. I hope it is known, friends, that these men are sinners. You see, no man is born a Christian, are they? I hope no one knows that theology. No man is born a Christian, therefore, friend, no man is born an elder. The above passage, or well, the passage of 1 Corinthians 6, showed that this man was born pre conversion, was some of the such with some of you. Remember it well, don't you? For the sake of those who don't, and are looking at me as if I'm speaking another language, I will read it to you. 1 Corinthians 6. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not enter the kingdom of heaven? Do you not know? Do you not do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor idolaters, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor robbers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God? And then, and then Paul says this in some with some of you. But you are washed. But you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Yeah. We're in the same company. We have been transformed from darkness into His glorious light. I wonder how, how the, 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 those who became elders and deacons in the church of Corinth. Imagine the mess. But Christ came in, He saved people. And out of that people, he says unto you, I will have to watch over. It's, it's all of grace. It's everything that our brother has just been ministering to us. We've been washed and justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. Friends, elders, and deacons are not perfect men, but they are radically changed men. And you want to be able to testify of that. Indeed, friends, the very writer to which we read from the letter to Timothy, who was he? He was a persecutor of the church. Now he is the apostle to the Gentiles. We must exclaim, Oh, what a work of grace! What then do these elders and deacons look like? We comment again, elders indeed. 
deacons come, of course, with baggage and past to which have been forgiven, dealt with by the great shepherd himself. But there's a change to place. He is a man who desires such an office. I said this last time, familiar language last time. Friends, to desire leadership is not a bad thing. An elder shall and should be one who, who desires to watch over and lead God's people. A deacon's desire to do the same might, might put the fear in you. An elder should be a, a one woman man. This man is one to whom is loyal to his wife, not looking for the next best thing. Looking to exchange his wife for another. A man who is faithful to his wife. A man who is not given to struggle, friends, in this culture with pornography. Or eyeing up all the women when in the Tesco aisle. Not that kind of man. In every way, he's one woman, man, and that one woman is his wife. He is a man of good behaviour. He's not known for his beauty, his brutish acts, or his sharp tongue. He is not looking for a fight or to upset anyone. Let me bracket that, but he is willing to have a fight. I trust you, hope, and know what I mean. Sometimes we are called to walk. We're going to sing it on the gun. Fight the war. The good fight. We're in a fight, we're in a war, and sometimes we men, we're going to have to roll our sleeves up and we're going to have to say to certain people, no, we're going to have to fight against the very culture of our day and say, we here are not doing that. And we're going to be ridiculed and scorned and spat out. We need to be men with grit. If we can harmonize all of that with this, seeking to be patient. Kind. Friends, this man is not a drunk man. At least not any longer. That's the old man. Dead to that. Not known any longer for his drinking habits. He might sit with his wife and enjoy a glass of bread to the glory of God. But he's not dictated and dominated by such drinking habits. They're gone and they're dead. An elder, a deacon, not greedy for money. Again, I said this last time, I say it again because there's some silly ideas when it comes to these types of passages. It doesn't say you can't have money. Does it? it doesn't say that. He's not greedy for it. He's not dictated again, not dominated by it. It's not his goal. It's not his motive or his ambition to become rich. He must be a man who can run his own household. Again, friends, this again does not mean he doesn't have family problems. It doesn't mean that. You see, we have per church problems, don't we? What he's saying is this family, if you run your family well, not perfectly, but well, and you deal with that, that, that child who has just gone, you've gone off the rails, but because you're in God's goodness and in his grace, you handle it well. So many men have suffered persecution over these things and they need not have to run it well. I am prayerful. I care. I lead my wife in the way of the Lord. I pray with them. I speak with them. I am gentle and kind most of the time. And I speak out of everything. We, we hope we want to be young friends. We want to be that. We want to be that. Manages home well. Our wives should feel protected when we're there. And when we are not, they are not. I know it's difficult in our culture, but our men run your house well. Pray with your wife. Stand at the door. And we'll get to it in a minute, my friends. If you think this is just for just for leaders or elders and deacons, it's your mistake.
head is hung well. In simple and straight terms, we could say that he is in charge. Again, difficult in this culture, I know. Friends, let me know this. When we talk about children, children are not in charge of the house. Sadly, again, and we will speak this come, come September, children do not run households. Parents do. Heads, the families, do. That's scriptural. That's biblical. That's what elders and deacons must seek to be doing well. Well. What we see here, saints, is that the elders and deacons' character must be of great significance. It must be an example to the whole flock. Beloved, if you come into my house, and I trust that you will and do, or have, you should see a bit of this. In fact, I dare say, putting the spotlight on me, you should see quite a bit of this. Those of you who are closest to me shall see warts and all, impatience, flares. Wives then glance at their husbands. Should be known that I am faithful to my wife and that my children are being reared in the Lord. Likewise, my children should honour me. Likewise, again, it's a difficult language in this strange and perverse age. But my house is full of a hospitable nature. You're coming to my house today, aren't you? Yeah, you're watching me. I'll be in my shorts and my t shirt this afternoon, okay? We ought to be men with kindness and not covetousness. Friends, truthfully and honestly, hear me. Not that I won't have a moment. Oh, I will. I have. They do. Don't they, Joe? Emily. You're still here, is she? Can you go over there? Angie, Tracy, you know them. They do. We do. We kick the cat. I've not got a cat since the last time. I've got a dog. I definitely wouldn't kill the dog. I'm not going to say something as a bad say. John, when you first came to my house, you might not want to be on you. You know what they do to dogs. <laughs> Friends, your response should be, is this not expected of all Christians? And in the end, the answer is an absolute, definite yes. You ought to be like this. That is in many ways the description of every man and woman who lives a Christian life. But the elders and the deacons, friends, is one who leads in these things and is always, 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 always seeking God to set the pace and get along you and lead the way. You should know that. Now. What's then the difference we asked, didn't we, between an elder and a deacon? A question that's been probably confusing amongst us. Friends, an, eight, a, in eight, an elder. To which our brother Nathan Sharon is in about to be laid hands upon. He is apt or able, the scriptures say, to teach. An elder is responsible for nurturing of God's flock and dear friends above all things. That is from the teaching of God's word. Not only given a sermon or, or, a, or a TTS, but, but ministering it privately into the lives of God's sheep. To the very life of God's people, the souls of those precious people. So, brethren, I present before you today the men to whom we believe are to watch over this congregation. I am convinced that this will be added to 
will need to be added to. But for today, this to whom we believe are to watch over this congregation. To you, the saints of God, you have had five weeks to pray, to question, to ask, to speak to them, to speak to me, pray for them. Today, in God's grace, we shall lay hands on them, bless them, upon them, asking God to bless them and take up this God given all, friends. God given all. But before we do that, we need to speak on your role. You see, we have a role, but you have a role. And I read it, didn't I? What is, what is your role? What is your responsibility to, to us? You have one. The Bible gives and grants you such a privilege. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive for they watch out for your souls as those who must give an account. I honestly believe that we're in a culture where they a pastor works one day a week. <laughs> Far from the truth, friends, I can humbly assure you to watch over one's soul. Let them do it with joy. Not with grief. I would love to stand here another hour and speak about that. Don't do it with grief. Don't, don't, don't be moaners and mockers. Don't moan because it just doesn't suit you or the chairs are stacked too high or some nonsense like that or, or the, the table's slightly to the left or to the right. Honestly, it's just dead religion. Don't be like that. Pointless and not profitable. Pray for us, for we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things, desiring to live honorably. 1 Peter 5 5 says, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Friends, I think it'd be right, a right judgment, and only proper to say that in this generation, that the word submit or obey is somewhat a negative to many. Marriage vows have been changed. We don't want to obey, we don't want honor. We could rightly say that. that we are like what we read in the very last verses of Judges. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Those are the days to which we live. We have a culture which says we will do what we like, when we like. Who are you to tell us what to do? We have a culture that in the main, I believe, struggle. In fact, not only struggle, but are fighting against things such as authority and the idea of submitting or obeying is one that is becoming increasingly foreign and in some cases hugely rejected. See, a lot of you older folk, if you don't mind me saying this today, if you walk down the street, that child will stop. There'll be respect. The world has changed. Respect for authorities, indeed, we had it read to us. Those days seemingly are increasingly disappearing. Authority, submission, nah, don't think so. That's the culture that we live in. That's the culture that these children are being reared in. Be what you want, say what you want, act like you want. I am what I am, and I will be what I will be, and I will submit to no one. True? Problem, because it's crept into the church. I'm not just talking about Boris and his shigannibins, whatever that word means. Has anybody got the gift of interpretation? You can do that later. 
This is going to get loads of views, I'm sure, oh, this week. We're going to have to share this everywhere. Friends, not just that, they're going to live like that, aren't they? Do I say, though we smile in areas of this morning, sadly, those who should have been caring for salt. We've heard of such public scandal within the evangelical church. Not just the Catholics, no, 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 in the Protestant. Heard of huge scandals, high profile, so called, I might say, but bracket that with pastors who have let themselves down, God's people down, God Himself down, leaving huge accusation towards the church and Christianity itself. And saints, we ought to lament such tragedies. You see, when we speak of submission, we ought to offer some sympathy to such views. What do I mean? We have, throughout our ages, we have heard of authorities abusing power. We've seen with our own eyes that which I've just mentioned. Abusing authority. And these stories that we hear are not just high profile, we've seen it in local churches up and down our land, sadly friends, not too far from us. Yet, all that said, we have and you have a biblical mandate. You, congregation, you have been given a biblical mandate to honour those who are over you, submitting yourselves to them. Hard, isn't it? See, we got it hard, you got it hard. To submit. I submitted to a man for 10 years of my life and I can tell you it was far from easy. It takes commitment. It takes humility and patience. It takes preference. It takes being in the Word of God. It takes, you know, even when you cross a link. And I would dare say that 80% of you in my time here already have been crossed at me. Well, that's the biggest response I've ever won. Encourage you. Pray for us. Love us. Serve us. Yeah, serve us. I say with no apology. Serve us. Pray for us, check in on us, honour us. The elder is doubly worthy. Say it again, no apology. Scriptural language. Submit yourselves to the elders, to the deacons, those elders and deacons to which, friends, we have both considered a few weeks ago and again this morning, a men of good report. Friends, why do I? This morning, stand in front of these men, presenting these men to you. And I ask you with honesty, and you'll have to answer it in your own heart with honesty. Is it because we're all just good buddies? Friends, come to one of our meetings. We can wrangle on out. I certainly hope that is not the case. The very reason to which these men are presented before you is because God has made it clear that these men are leaders. How has he shown us? How has he shown us that? By a vision or a dream? No, no, friends, the very word of God itself is our measures to. These men are fit into the qualifications that we have looked at, not perfectly, but progressively and positively, being the men to whom walk in the way of biblical leadership. Pick on Nathan. Not because it's easiest. <laughs> to whom we will lay hands on in a moment. He doesn't become an elder this morning. He has been serving in that way for months. Today we affirm it. Today we make it public. He's been doing this role the whole time he's been with us, teaching us. No doubt, praying for us. 
serving you night and day. Might look different to Mark and Darren. Might look different to me. Don't, all, don't, don't, don't put us in straight jackets. Let the gift to which they've been given be given and receive it in that way. You might not hear John, John Martin. You might be probably never hear a word from him. But know that he'll be serving you. He'll be helping us serve you. John, when you will hear a word from him. When we John? Yes. yes. We're all different. I am not Nathan, and Nathan is not me. Chris is not Darren, and Darren is not me. None of us are serving like Mark. <laughs> I must wrap up for them because we need to pray for these men. These are men to whom God has appointed to care for your soul, to watch over you, to teach you the word of God. And we urge you, brethren, says 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. It is not me nor any one of us who demand such standards. This is God himself who has said this, who demands this. Saints, this is your duty. Honour us men. Who labour over your souls. Honour those men who lie awake considering what is best for you. Honour those men who labour in the world for you. That you might be sanctified, that you might be ahead of them, that you might be helped in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. This is good for you, says the writer to the Hebrews. This is good for you. This is proper for you. When you do it with joy, as I've said already, don't do it with grief. I'm not saying don't come, express your concerns. Please do that. But what spirit do you do it in? Don't come and try and win an argument for winning an argument's sake. Sometimes it's better to be silent rather than to speak. Those men are professional at that. This is good for you. Pray for us, serve us, love us. Indeed, we ask our Lord. Saints, much, much more could be said. But I want to say one, two more things. John made this very clear as we prayed earlier for the elders and the deacons' wives. I think that to some degrees they carry more than we do. It's true. They see the good, the bad, and they definitely see the ugly. Again, I'm asking you to pray for our wives. And when we lay hands, we shall be bringing the wives of these men up because they will be playing and do play a huge and significant role. We ask you to do it with joy, to do it in the fear of God, and finally, may we all, saint, elder, deacon, submit ourselves to the chief shepherd himself, the greatest of ours, the pastor of pastors, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, worship in him as we should live in for him and loving him as he deserves. Seeking only to please him. Seeking only to serve him, exalting him, preaching him, singing of him. And as we shall read in a moment, then when he appears, when he appears for them, we will receive the crown of the glory. And praise be to God for these words that does not fade away. May God be praised. Friends,
we're going to come down to the, the front here and we're going to first to pray for Jonathan. Jonathan. Why am I calling him Jonathan? It's my name. My middle name. It's my middle name as well. Jonathan. And I'm going to pray for Chris and then we're going to pray for Nathan. And I've asked Nathan as well to that to then pray for us all. Those who have already been um, put in the role as well, friends. So let us, let us go down and let's, let's pray. Thank you so much for your patience.